one is human first before a citizen of a country and a member of a tribe. Everyone in Nigeria is affected by the ups and downs. Even if you are a highly placed billionaire in the society or a governor of a state with all the police escorts and bodyguards, you will still be stuck in a traffic one day, not caused by a bad road. People in this class wouldn't drive on this type of road anyway. They might be stuck in traffic in a neatly paved road where a rickety car broke down. The rickety car is the reflection of our purchasing power. A greater majority of Nigerians can't afford a brand new car. They can't even buy it on higher purchase. In summary, what it means is that no matter how highly placed you are in Nigeria or how wealthy you are, you are still affected by the happiness in Nigeria. That's why many wealthy people send their children to schools abroad. It's a testament that Nigeria's education system is subpar. Even the president of Africa's most populous country gets his medical care abroad, paying thousands of dollars or even millions to foreign doctors and hospitals. It's a testament that Nigeria's healthcare delivery is broken. So there's no market in Nigeria where some people buy things cheaper than others. Everyone goes to the same market. Getting back to how we went about verifying random samples in order to authenticate this information, we started out in Kaduna, precisely in Jaji, a Gabi local government area. There's this polling unit, the railway station Jaji Cantonment. It was a landslide win for the Labour Party, as you can see. Other polling units like the Air Commodore Quarters and the Agri Quarters Air Force Base in Rigachiku couldn't be verified because they all had blood results uploaded. Once the polling unit result sheet is not sharp and legible, it means that the result wasn't captured with a beaver's machine or maybe it was done using the offline method because the beaver's machine has a very sharp camera with autofocus. You can tell the difference between the two images. On the left is beaver's captured result sheet while on the right is a low resolution image that serves no backup purpose. You can see the summary of the results from all the military bases in Kaduna State. They mostly voted for the Labour Party. Granted that military men are always on deployment to the front lines or places where they are needed, and so many might not be home during the election in order to vote, but even at that, men will always have a great influence on the political inclinations of their families who were at home during the elections and equally exercise their right to vote. People that are serving in many Nigerian security agencies are not immune to economic hardship, security challenges, and the incompetence of the government. As can be seen here in Ilori, Quara State, this happened in August 2022. Policemen took to the streets to express their displeasure on being owed more than a year's salary. <laughs> This is the situation we find ourselves in. Politicians have no reason whatsoever to owe workers their salaries. The security agents also do not make it easy for themselves by extending the frustration to citizens who are not responsible for their low wages and poor working conditions. In fact, the private citizens they always intimidate also face poor working conditions in their different workplaces. Everyone is feeling the pressure. But it's very unfortunate that security agencies feel they are more powerful and can get away with human rights violations and extortions. Everything being equal, all workers experiencing low wages and poor working conditions should be on the same side, demanding increase in salary and improvement in working conditions, not one intimidating another. In other words, all workers, whether private or public, have a common enemy. While a greater percentage of the security agents are prone to intimidating and antagonizing citizens, there are still a few that are nice and humane. Anyway, let's get back to our investigations on how the Labour Party had a sweeping run during the presidential election, winning 21 states out of all the states where there are military formations across Nigeria. Remember that not all states have military barracks, but in all the ones that have, the Labour Party had a field day winning in many polling units in and around the military barracks. Let's see Lagos, where there are many military formations, like in Ojo, 
in Ojo barracks, all the polling units inside the barracks, around the gates, and all surroundings, Labour Party won all of them. No need wasting time researching further in Lagos because Labour Party won Lagos with a landslide. Overall, this is the percentage of the win for the Labour Party in all the military formations in Lagos State. Impressive. In Kano State, the Labour Party actually came second after the NNPP with an impressive 33%. This is not really very surprising. The servicemen gave Nigerians clues before the election, as can be seen in these videos. This one made it very clear who the choice should be. Maybe I go follow you. You never give me all that. I will vote for Swale Oua, citizen. Just a play. Maybe give me all that. If you like, vote for who you like if you like vote for who they like but try to vote for person may no like money may like justice vote for person may no like public city may like humanity so that the country goes strong in kebi state it was also a landslide win for the labor party scoring 59 percent in a core northern state our servicemen represent our diversity many ethnic groups are represented in the nigerian military this is why people shouldn't generalize when they make comments about people it is true that some soldiers like to show their strength on many citizens but not all the soldiers do the same also many have criticized yorubas because of what happened in lagos during the election where thoughts prevented many people from voting because they aren't yorubas the reality is that the people that perpetrated this condemnable act are a few in number compared to the larger Yoruba population. They do not in any way stand for the principles of which Yorubas are known for. They might not be very vocal, but the large population of Yorubas do not share this view. Many of them who were vocal during the campaigns were called all sorts of names simply because they didn't support APC. There's also notable individuals who supported P2B not only because they believed that it was the turn of the Southeast to produce the president, but because they found Omerwabi in the man P2B. His character and antecedents strongly represent the core values of Yorubas. Ndibo also shares the same values. The primary reason for their massive support for P2B is not because he is Igbo, but because they trust him. They believe he is the best among the other candidates. He is more competent and Anambra people also experience his governorship. Put people like Ojus or Carlo and the likes on the ballot and see how they will be rejected across the southeast geopolitical zone. That's why we didn't bother researching the polling unit results from military bases in the southeast because they followed the same pattern. 98%, 95%, 86%. Even in other states that the Labour Party won, they were all landslide wins. States like Delta and Edo states. <laughs> Now, let's see other states like Bauchi, where the votes of the Labour Party were massively suppressed. The Labour Party came out tops among the servicemen. The same pattern continued in Niger State. During the campaigns, it will be always used Niger State to illustrate the agricultural potential of most northern states because of their massive arable land. There's also Ogun State, where the Labour Party won. Ogu State is among the state that the Labour Party is contesting the results. Taraba State is not surprising at all because the Labour Party actually won Taraba. The summary of all this is that it shows the true reflection of votes cast in many locations and the ones in focus being military bases. Thugs and election riggers couldn't penetrate and change the outcome of the results. It also shows how diverse P2B's support base is unlike narratives that want to characterize it as sectional the third one is that people really understood peter b's message during the campaigns peter b went everywhere to canvas for votes he even visited some communities against the advice of the military because they considered some of these areas very dangerous but in spite of all the security advice and the fact that he couldn't land in any nearby military base he still made up his mind out of bravery 
to visit these people and spread his message. Just like a marketer trying to market his products, he will go to anywhere to do that. Peter B is a man who believes in due process. He doesn't believe in cutting corners. Who would have thought that Peter B knew the INEC chairman?